Subscribe, hit that bell icon and share this clip if you enjoy it. This is TRS Clips. Most of our knowledge comes from mistakes or mm. accidents mm. initially mm. because we don't have that capacity to run experiments at that time. The next big break breakthrough happened through psychedelics. Okay. Ironically, which is when? Uh, around in the early part of uh, 19th century, 20th century, uh, 19 15 20. That was the time when a lot of these psychedelic drugs were discovered. LSD was one of the major breakthroughs. The guy who discovered it, I think he was German or Swiss. and um, he was working for a, a petrol company i believe and uh, he was just running experiments on different drugs and uh, one day he was cycling home and he found he was tripping <laughs> he had no idea why but he and he because he was a scientist he came home and he wrote down everything hmm. that he was going through and he figured out that he was experimenting with four five drugs at on that day and one of them must have slipped in through his finger skin and got an absorbed in the blood mm. and that is when they discovered lsd and it found they found out that lsd was the strongest psychedelic at that time because a 0.02 mg could send you on a trip mm. and then they ran experiments more and that is how they found out this whole system in the body called as serotonin before that they didn't even know that there was something called serotonin and now serotonin is the major drug it's the major hormone all your depression anxiety everything is managed by serotonin mm. so the whole serotonin network our knowledge of that we owe to lsd mm. i think in the last episode dopamine was the hero of the episode yeah. we spoke about how success and all that is related to dopamine right. uh, but how is serotonin also controlling anxiety and these things serotonin the whole serotonin network has a it's very complex but to put it in a very simple way serotonin controls dopamine So when you talk of impulsiveness serotonin allows you to be calmer serotonin allows you to take a step back value things how much how important is this thing to you do you really need to do this action should you say this dopamine says go for it mm. you'll get a kick out of it just do it serotonin says rook soch so if your serotonin and dopamine levels are on balance you are a balanced person If your serotonin levels are low you will be more and more impulsive it's crazy how personality types actually boil down to just levels of hormones mm. so if there is an impulse buyer for example so if you find yourself going on amazon just to browse and you find something you like do you add to cart do you buy now mm. decided by your both of them will give you dopamine but serotonin will decide are you able to put it off for later or will you go for it rest now mm. is the, it is it like the body's way of you said that uh if the serotonin levels are low it means you're impulsive yeah so is that impulse a form of trying to raise your serotonin levels because serotonin is a feel good hormone no serotonin itself is not a feel good hormone serotonin okay. is a i like to think of it as a balancing hormone dopamine is the feel good hormone mm. but serotonin controls the dopamine levels because the problem with dopamine is as soon as it goes high it goes down also that rapidly what people need to understand about the hormonal system is yeah. that the secretion of one hormone is usually dependent on another hormone think of it like five six seesaws mm. in your brain all of them controlling each other mm. so if serotonin goes down dopamine goes up serotonin goes up dopamine comes down mm. but there are these are not the only seesaws there are some seven or eight different neurochemicals all of them controlling each other mm. so when you say you have to be a balanced person you're actually saying all your neural chemicals have to be in balance the dark side of serotonin is that if your serotonin levels are low and you are feeling impulsive what if you what if you feel impulsive towards a negative thing killing someone killing someone killing yourself mm. so they did studies on uh, people who have attempted suicide and they found that uh, the serotonin levels in their body was low they studied their cerebrospinal fluid which is the fluid in the brain and they checked for serotonin molecules and they found it was too low also part of depression mm. so in depression also serotonin levels are low which is why serotonin replacement is one of the cornerstones of depression therapy mm. you know let's talk about the moment of suicide mm. the moment of doing something dark and impulsive like this mm. it could even apply to things like molestation rape yeah. between the moment you choose to kill someone or yourself or you choose to do a wrong thing and the moment that you actually go about doing it there's a phase of contemplation 
and debate mm-hmm. so you're saying that if the serotonin levels are lower uh, than usual that phase where you're contemplating where you're trying to equate things where you're thinking of the outcome of your actions yeah that phase is very short for people who are impulsive yeah so will serotonin reduce the amount of contemplation you'll do about your outcomes will you just think of the action think of it this way serotonin empowers certain parts of your brain more so they are in the picture we have multiple levels of action so when you say that i did something that is oversimplifying it so if uh, somebody lights your foot on fire or if you just step on something sharp your foot goes back even before you are aware that your foot was on fire so that is a spinal reflex that decision is made by your spinal cord it didn't even come up to your brain mm. and every few levels there is another center of decision making so think of it like a corporate company the ceo doesn't get involved in every decision mm. so the lower level people will only make a lot of decisions and the complexity of the decision goes on increasing and you get involved more and more mm. something like self harm the ceo has the job of saying no vetoing it because it is the limbic system that does those impulsive things it this will feel good let me do it or forget it there is no hope anymore let me end it hmm. the ceo has the job of vetoing it that don't putting logic into putting it putting logic into it because the there is something called as a fronto polar area uh, as per the name it is the pole of your frontal lobe so it absolutely at the tip hmm. this area is the one responsible for visualizing the future So when you get a when you get asked a question in the HR meeting, say like where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in five years? That is that uh, frontal polar area has the job of visualizing the future or manifestation. Manifestation, mm. and right behind that is an area called ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Name is complex. This is where serotonin works maximum, and this area has the job of valuing things. Your present. focusing on yes. your present how how important is this for you mm. now put these two areas together mm. you visualize yourself in this space uh, in 5 years how important is that for you put them together and you have hope mm. you are you have having a positive outlook towards life you are optimistic mm. you don't have serotonin whatever is your visualization if you don't have value that visualization has no meaning for you now you have a negative outlook towards so it your future and your present are tied in yes. the same way that that tip of your brain which decides the future yes. and the part behind that which decides the present are tied they are tied mm. so when you don't have serotonin whatever you visualize will appear bleak which is why they say success begins in the mind yeah. if you want to get somewhere in life first you have to believe that yes i will be able to because right now i have this kind of a skill set and it's honestly a spiritual tool i personally used to overcome self doubt i dealt with a lot of self doubt battles mm. up to the point where i realized hold on if i have spent 4 years on the internet constantly growing what stops me from growing for the next 40 years right. if my trajectory was upwards right. equated the present set i'll be able to get there and every year after that has been better i had one bad year mm. which was still an upward growth year right. but uh, it wasn't as crazy growth as before because i was trying to do two businesses instead of just be a biser right. but once that second business got stable monk entertainment yeah. i was able to put all my energy back into be a biser and then continue growing on like that upward trajectory it is uh, very easy to dismiss manifestation or positive thinking the power of positive thinking but at a biological level you need to think positively for the rest of your brain to follow mm. it is just like a corporate if your ceo is a negative person that startup will not run mm. it is just logic ask any ceo and at their group meetings if they don't paint a positive picture it's not going to work it's not going to work mm. so your prefrontal cortex is the ceo you have to be positive so that the rest of your brain follows mm. wow man um why is serotonin secreted when you're cuddling or when you are around your family or mm. around your uh, dog you know why is serotonin linked to that is it this sort of phenomena of you starting to appreciate the present that these are my blessings these are my gifts mm. so do the serotonin levels increase because of that and is that why they say that work life balance is important yeah. because when you start enjoying your weekend when you start enjoying your family time you bring back a certain energy to your work yeah. is this the biology behind it there is one more hormone since oh. you brought up family 
which is called oxytocin. Mm. And oxytocin was initially thought of as only important for women to give birth. That was what the initial idea was. Now you know that oxytocin is important both in men and women, in all genders. And the idea of oxytocin is bonding. A human to human connection. Human to human connection. Or human to dog or human to... Anything. Hmm. You could even have oxytocin release when you see a favorite picture of yours. Hmm. It is that, but it is more for uh, living to living being. Mm. So even when you look at the picture of a cute puppy, that feeling of awe that you get is that puppy tricking your brain into releasing oxytocin. Mm. So it's like your brain ejaculates with an awe. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. It's, it's your orgasm. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. So and that o- is, oxytocin and serotonin are linked? They are all linked. Like how you said the system of the seesaw. Exactly. Source. Just like mm. how dopamine and serotonin is linked. Dopamine and oxytocin is linked. Oxytocin and ser- uh, serotonin is linked. We haven't even talked of testosterone. But uh, all of these hormones keep each other in balance. So when you are spending time with your family, oxytocin is released. That increases the level of bonding. And one important role oxytocin has is it reduces your amygdala activation. Mm, which is your center Stressor. of fear. Stressor, yes. Mm. So the more oxytocin you have going on, the less stressed you are Mm. because your bonding is there. What does oxytocin do to serotonin? So those are actually independent networks that uh, connect at a couple of places. The, they have a, they are synergistic. So it is not like dopamine and serotonin that one goes up, one goes down. So serotonin has the role of figuring out how much you value this person. So who you are cuddling with Mm. matters. Mm. Like as an emotional bond rather than just physical. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we should we should be careful of not oversimplifying things. Okay. But okay. Uh, the basic idea is what are you giving your value towards? Mm. That is what uh, roughly serotonin network is responsible or for. In my world, especially when I'm talking to my co-founders mm-hmm. or my inner circle, I keep referring to putting my consciousness on things. So say if there are mm-hmm. four startups, I consciously pull out my consciousness out of two of them in phases. Sure. And I say that right now, I'm just going to focus on beer biceps and level. Sure. Uh, is that what is related to serotonin like this is what matters to me in my present that word matters is serotonin okay Mm. that you are giving value to something Mm. what the other thing you already said about consciousness that is your attention network which i'm sure is linked to serotonin in some way it is of course but it is more of dopamine so attention is linked very closely to dopamine Mm. because that is what decides should you pay attention to what you're saying should i pay attention to the food if somebody puts and somebody comes and puts a big cake on the table my attention network will get split Mm. because my uh, amygdala is telling me that look 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 there's food Mm. so that is all got it i think this is uh it's even heavy for me honestly like yeah. all this stuff but yeah. um you we can know, take it a lot slower actually no 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 worries uh i love this bro <laughs> i'm sure there are people who like especially when i'm challenged on this podcast it it's the biggest stimulation for me that's my dopamine <laughs> but uh, <laughs> say no to it <laughs> um you know okay so you uh, let's go back to that moment of killing someone or suicide yeah, yeah. you said that Often with people who are dealing with depression or people who are impulsive, the serotonin levels are low. Yeah. What is the personality difference in people whose serotonin levels are high or balanced? Right. They, they're, more, they're more calculated people. They think about everything in their present, which probably means they practice gratitude for everything that's there. Gratitude is a big part of it. Yes. Mm. Because you have to be able to have that bandwidth to give value to things. When you say gratitude, when you say, I'm so grateful that uh, I have my family with me, I will only be grateful if I value my family. Mm. So if I don't value anything, gratitude is a very hard thing to come across. Mm. So when you say that uh, your all your neurochemicals are in place and they're well balanced, it means that all these positive virtues are also naturally coming. Mm. You cannot say to somebody, be grateful when they are depressed. There is a chemical problem in place that has to be dealt with either through drugs or through therapy, usually through both. Mm. Because uh, therapy is also as effective in, uh, you know, improving your neurochemical state and drugs are also effective. Mm. So say if someone is, when we say clinically depressed or, you know, biologically going through some form of anxiety, panic attacks, it's 
often the case where the serotonin levels are low is there a linkage uh, yes so when you talk of depression it is not a simple uh, neurochemical being low depression is actually a big series of events that happen one after the other in your brain in your brain okay where there are actual areas being shrink uh, being shrunk okay so there is an area called as the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex uh, the name is not as important as the action the this is the area so when you tap your temple you are basically tapping that area mm. and that is the area that is responsible for your actual output your action and if that is gone you are unable to pay attention you can't focus on things you're not motivated you are not motivated mm. and uh, this sets off a chain reaction because your identity is different you used to identify yourself as somebody who would be a go getter who can just you know focus on things i used to study so well in school now look at me it is not really your fault when your the parts of your brain that are supposed to do that is not functioning as well then it sets off a chain reaction and then that is what is called as the loop of depression mm.